Merry Cave Christmas, everyone. Yeah! 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 Cave Christmas? What's that pipe squeezer up to now? It's the hottest day of the year. Super Mario, Super Mario, Super Mario World. Super Mario World was a show from the past. And if you're thinking it's good, well, you'll be sorry you asked. Delfino and the Peach here are watching what they can. The budget was two dollars and a piece of ham. Super Mario World. Super Mario World. It just looks like ass. The Super Show Saga. It's a gas. Don't talk about that on the podcast. What? Toenails? No, grody. <laughs> it's like that one episode of Broken Picture Phone where uh, the the clip was toenail pie and Thomas was just going, ah, ah, no. Stop it. Grody. <laughs> pinching your brothers. Stop pinching your brothers. Okay, hello and welcome to today's a very special episode of Delfino and Peach's Super Show Saga. Merry Christmas, I'm Peach Supreme. And happy holidays, I'm Delfino Durians. Yay! Yay! So we're going a little out of order this time. Uh-huh. Not just because I messed up the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot, was it not one but two episodes we yeah. forgot? <laughs> I got so caught up in the euphoria of having the Christmas episode happen like before, around. around Christmas <laughs> that I, I forgot that a couple of other episodes existed. <laughs> And I was like, that's perfect. We could do the Christmas, Christmas episode Christmas, for Christmas. Christmas. And then it turns out we're like two episodes off. And I'm like, we could just shuffle it. We'll you know? just bump it up a little bit. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Nobody will notice. Sure. You know, we just added a new caveman. Whatever. <laughs> it's fine. We've never been introduced to them before. But whatever. <laughs> As someone who did slightly cheat and watch a bit of Ghosts Are Us. And the other episode, send in the clown. Oh my god. Singular clown. Oh. Uh, Uptar does appear in one of those episodes, and it does a better job of, like, who is this guy besides the local troublemaker? So for those who do not know, uh, Uptar is our toad substitute. I thought it was going to be Yoshi, but no, it's Uptar. Yoshi plays his own character, which I appreciate. So Uptar is voiced by John Stalker, which sometimes you can tell when he starts screaming and it sounds suspiciously like Toad. I guess so. Do you think he's like Toad's ancestor? (sighs) Toad's ancestors are other mushrooms. That's true. I don't think he's related to Toad. Not related to Toad? No. These people are not related Where to Toad. Where did these cave people even come from? I don't know. They came from bacteria, grew into monkeys, and then that came <laughs> from lizards, and that came from fish. And I don't evolution. super remember <laughs> evolution, baby. Are you excited for Christmas this year? Um, it's gonna happen. It's, I've been busy, busy. <laughs> it's happening, but the but the weather has not been allocating it. No, <laughs> no, we've had tornado warnings out the wazoo we've had tornado happenings one was very close to where i lived and then i (laughs) went home and i was like dang it i missed the tornado i'm so sad you are the only one who's sad about this we are all ecstatic that you're fine i'm missing extra credit opportunities oh my gosh it's gonna hurt down the line anywho So it's not feeling very wintry. It is a lie on TV when they have that snowy season before Christmas. It's like, no, it's dry and it's cold. That's what it is. And maybe you'll start getting snow in January. Personally, I think if it's going to be cold, we need to have snow because snow makes it better. (laughs) It does. It makes the dryness fit. It just makes it pretty. You get that like white haze in the air. Oh. Uh, it, it, you just feel warmer inside when it's Got snowing. that Christmas feeling. Trick Jeremy into writing a letter to Santa. That old Christmas feeling. Singing what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of Christmas. They were playing that song in the mall the other day. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's I'm a like, real song now. I mean, it's a real song. <laughs> it's from the Phineas and Ferb Christmas special, which I watch every year. <laughs> we do. I haven't watched it yet. Yet. <laughs> Do we own it on... Yes, we do own it on DVD. Yes, we own it on DVD. 
uh, well, I guess we don't have Disney Plus anymore. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> we don't give money to the, to the man. To the streaming. But speaking of streaming, I think you can actually watch this show on Paramount Plus. But you can also watch it for free on YouTube. So there's really no benefit to getting Paramount Plus to watch this show, but... What show? Uh, Mario World. Oh, Mario World. <laughs> and Mario 3. Right. <laughs> I forgot what we were talking about. I was yes. so caught up in the Christmas. You got stuck in that Christmas feeling. I mistakenly <sighs> drank a coffee last night at 5 o'clock. <laughs> well, we know what your favorite Christmas episode is, but what what's one of your least favorite Christmas specials? What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, how about a less mainstream Christmas episode? episode or i mean every year special. i watch muppets family christmas i love that one is that the one where all the jim henson folks mm -hmm. come together so it's a mix of muppets sesame street and fraggle rock mm -hmm. where they all bum at somebody's it's on house. youtube for free if you want to watch it it's, it's for free it's, it's good it's it just fills you with those warm happy feelings i guess and they do a big sing along i guess it's very family focused mm -hmm. like getting together with Friends and family. I just love the humor. Seeing each other, making new friends, all oh, that dang, good stuff. I was going to watch Letters to Santa before we got rid of our Disney Plus, but I forgot. Oops. Oopsie <laughs> poopsie. Oopsie poopsie. Uh, I'd say some of my favorite Christmas specials are recent ones from PBS because <laughs> everyone sleeps on public access TV. But Are you talking about Odd Squad? I, well... <laughs> I didn't really love Odd Squad's Christmas special. That one was more of a math episode about graphing. I'm talking about Let's Go Luna and oh, Nature yeah, Cat. The cat one. The Nature cat. cat. Whoops, the fruit the cake. cake. <laughs> Where they're it's planning so to go funny. to Australia to have a nice tropical uh, Christmas and they end up in Antarctica. And they start learning about different Christmas traditions in different cultures. Like one culture has the witch come to your house through the meatball. Uh, storms and do all this stuff and then another one has a santa look-alike on a donkey and you leave carrots out for the donkey and some treats out for santa because you gotta help the animal it just reminds well. me of that one section of the three caballeros where they they halt the movie to talk about <laughs> las posadas let's <laughs> stop we stop need... the movie i'm taking off my hat because we're doing a respectful salute to las posadas <laughs> and las donald jose posadas. just sit there like oh ah. And so the funny part is that Luna keeps giving the people who they talk to, like, thank you for sharing your story. Have, have a the, fruit cake. Have a hand have a homemade fruit cake. And they all go, Oh, thanks. And they thanks. and they throw the fruit cake away into the Arctic Sea. I and don't then, see why everybody hates fruit cake so and then much. At the end of the episode, uh, a bunch of penguins come to save them. And they're like, penguins, why did you decide to do this? And somebody translates, well, it's because you gave us all of these delicious fruitcake presents. Thank you so much. And then Luna goes, mm, that kind of looks like my fruitcake. And everybody goes, ah, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> and then they're like, fine, we'll try the fruitcake just for you, Luna. And they're like, oh, it's not bad at all. It's just a fruitcake. It's a fruitcake. It's not mush well i guess like people think like when you over bake it it just turns to a brick <laughs> well it could turn into a brick and then the fruits inside just get mushy and Look, gross a colorful door stop <laughs> is that something they said <laughs> it's from Sam and max okay the pancreas <laughs> And then the nature cat one Cursed is fun. useless pancreas. <laughs> because it's that good old Christmas carol one, but it's not the Christmas carol verbatim. The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody has a really good Christmas carol spoof with London. Yeah. Like, it, it really hits you in the feels. <laughs> hits you in the feels. But it's about nature cat being too commercial for Christmas and forgetting about nature and the nature of the holiday. And they got, like, the scratchets, which are little mice to mimic the cratchits <laughs> oh my god tiny timmy so there's so many there's so many good classic ones like charlie brown and muppets christmas carol like those are great i love the new ones yep i've been in a huge sam and max mood mostly just because they the, the new games out the game and the first episode's actually a christmas episode so oh, i yeah. station santa and then they have their own Christmas special, which is a uh, Christmas bloody Christmas, where they hang they, out with uh oh Santa, uh, was gonna... Granny Ruth. Oh, isn't that with the one where they take Santa to jail, where they kill Santa? No, that that's in the that's in the game. I'm talking about the TV show. Okay, there's two Christmas episodes in the TV show. Well, there's one in the TV show. Okay, in the game, there's also one. 
Okay, and that's the one where they go... They they kill Santa. They murder Santa Claus. <laughs> to be fair, San- Santa sent them a killer robot. <laughs> okay. For some reason, the thing about Santa Claus makes me think of Sandy Claus, which also <laughs> makes me ask this question of you, Peach. Would you say that Nightmare Before Christmas, it's a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? Which one is it more of? I think they're capitalizing on the two biggest holidays in America. I think it is neither, and it's the best November 1st movie, (laughs) because it's after Halloween. It's the best movie to watch in November. And and you wallow in, like, Halloween, 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 post-Halloween. Post-Halloween depression. (laughs) Depression. (laughs) P-H-D. And uh, pre Christmas, Christmas preparation and over preparation for Christmas, <laughs> like getting too excited. Pre Christmas syndrome, <laughs> uh, Christmas hype, if you will. PCS. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what Nightmare Before Christmas is. It was meant to be a holdover. <laughs> it's meant to be a November first movie. It's truly, Christmas keeps eking ever closer. <laughs> you say every that, year. but I was as someone who works in a. <laughs> Maybe it's because you have to listen to Commercial the radio all day, all day. Where Although this year they haven't been playing as much Christmas music on the radio. Like they keep alternating it. And I'm like, where is all my Christmas music? I, want, I need more Christmas I music. I want the Christmas music. We, well, as of recording this, we have 10 days to Christmas. You can put up the picture I sent you of uh, the Act- whiteboard at work. Actually, I think we have eight days to Christmas. No, oh, I, I used my fancy counting thing at work. It's like, okay, it's There's nine. Ten. Okay. Today's the... today's nine. Nine? Yeah. Because if you're counting today, then it's 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Wait, that just turned into eight. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know how many days there are to Christmas. It's a little bit more than a week. It's slipping. <laughs> slipping. I'm slipping. Slipping ah! through our fingers all the more. Do, today's... Do, do, do. Okay. Yeah. Eight. Okay. Eight. eight. That's a number. Okay. Because 17 plus eight. It's 25. Numbers. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Anywho, uh, I guess it's time to talk about Mario. Yeah. When you think of Mario in Christmas, do you have any first thoughts that come to mind? I mean, Mario's never really done any Christmas things, aside from the one episode of the Super Show, Koopa Claus. <laughs> I always think of the Mario 3D land and 3D world levels where you're in the snow. Oh, those And there's that super the fun music. Skate. Oh, it's not the ice skating. It's the just well, you're running around in the snow. That's in world, but I'm talking in 3D land. Where it's I guess just, I mostly think of Kirby you run around when I think snow. of Christmas and it's cr- Kirby and Nintendo. Of Christmas. Well, and Kirby's Epic Yarn, they have the whole snow world, which has oh, a bunch yeah. of Christmas and stuff. And then there's DDD and his practically Santa outfit. <laughs> Sign- I guess it's really uh, Brawl in the family that's made me associate Kirby with Christmas. Because he wrote all those beautiful songs. Mm-hmm. Very Christmas. Very good, very nice. Very good, very nice. Speaking of very good, very nice. We're not Christmas in this episode. We're having a little intermission. Okay, Bella fine. and Ziggy. They're going Robins. to be adopted soon. And they're getting all vaccinated and prepared and it's like oh, oh. goodbye little oh, kitten Bella. i really thought bella was gonna stick around and maybe move in with melissa i thought ziggy was gonna stick around just because of how much ziggy loves robin ziggy is like attached like velcro to robin <laughs> like every time robin does anything it, ziggy is also it there is. although our favorite cats recently have been snoop Poo! and zara and push but in terms oh. of other channels Snoop is really Snoop. winning up those ranks. Zabra. Zabra! They got a new apartment. Zabra! <laughs> Snoop doesn't like the new apartment. Those little like, beans. Those beans. Shit. Loafy, loafy, loafer Little loafy loafer. Little loafy loafer. Speaking of loafs, Christmas loaf, Christmas time, Christmas season. Fruitcake. Fruitcake Christmas. We don't get any cavemen fruitcake in this episode. We don't. I knew- <laughs> <laughs> you know what was missing? A Yuletide log joke. The trees? That they could have had a Yuletide log? They could have had a lot of things in this episode. They just hit the bare minimum. They did. <laughs> Mario, again. Look, we only had like 13 11, minutes to work. 11 Ele- minutes. 11 minutes to work. God, that was 11 minutes. That was 11 minutes. I think that every time I watch these episodes, I'm like, that was only 11 minutes. That felt like an hour of my life. <laughs> it's because 
so much happens. But I have to keep pausing it just to write my notes because if I try to write notes while it's happening, something else crazy will happen and I'll be like, whoa, 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 wait, whoa, wait, whoa, wait, wait, whoa, wait, whoa. Hold the coupon phone. <laughs> <laughs> what is the coop is going on? All Today right. I've written my notes in red and green pen. Alternating. Very, very Was that Christmas annoying day. to like, to have to grab well, it? Well, it was annoying because my green pen keeps shorting out on me, but yeah. <laughs> I would have had it gone downstairs and grab another green pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me, me. So much work. So today's episode is called The Night Before Cave Christmas. And it was written by Martha Moran. But the story was written by Phil Harnage. This has not happened, even though this is how the episodes were produced. This is not how they're usually cited. I'm thinking Moran wanted to deflect blame for this episode. <laughs> and they're like, look, I had to write it, but he's the guy who came up with this. Maybe he put a little more effort into this one than the other ones. Okay. He was like, oh, we need a holiday special. You mean uh, instead of writing a single sentence prompt, he wrote a paragraph or he so? He wrote like an actual outline or something. I don't think he wrote an outline. I think he wrote maybe a paragraph. <laughs> but we've heard of Martha Moran before. Uh, they've written a lot for Mario. They've written Flat I'm starting Koopa, to kind of recognize these names. Plumber's Academy, Quest for Pizza, Never Koopa Koopa, Dadzilla, Tag Team Trouble, Half of Cootie Pie Rocks, that was another Phil Harnage collab, and Life's Rough. And from that long history, I can definitely tell the difference between this episode and the past two. Because this one has actually good word phrase, like, um... Wordplay. Wordplay, there we go. Like one liners. Yes, they've that's got true. They there are a lot of really funny ones. We've returned recently. back to that state. <laughs> I think Matthew Moran just inserts the good right. Martha. M Martha. Sorry, Martha. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Martha. <laughs> so I also felt a bit mean counting this as Ugtar's first episode, but whatever. So we start- Don't worry, Ugtar's a butt in every episode. <laughs> <laughs> we have not even watched them all yet. Yeah. We don't know this for certain. Yeah. I don't know if this episode's anything to go on. <laughs> so we start with Princess Toadstool looking as pretty as a petunia, and Mario and Luigi- A petunia? Petunia. Just a pretty flower. Okay. <laughs> a, a peony, if you will. Well, uh, Yoshi and- Ugtar. Ugtar. Who's this little tiny cave boy with he, curly He kind of looks hair. like Harold from Captain Underpants. Kind of, if he was a caveman. Yes. If it was like the Ook and, uh, shoot, what was that comic that George Oak and, and Harold? Gluck? Yeah, Ook and Gluck. He's Gluck. If Gluck looked like Harold. <laughs> <laughs> and if Gluck was a jerk. And he's a little child. I don't think he's a butt. child. I think he's a grown man in that comic. So anyway, uh, Yoshi and Ugtar are fighting over a barbecue mammoth rib. They're fighting over this, like, with two their, cats with their fighting hands. My Toya! My Toya! My Toya! My Toya! My Toya! And Mario's like, oh my gosh, please stop. And then Mario has to be the parent. They're like, Come on, guys, you can this is an edible object. You can I feel this like half. this next scene would be very gory if it was they didn't establish that it was a barbecue rib. <laughs> With because a, barbecue sauce just flies everywhere on Mario's face. Everywhere. I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> splatters all over. But they eat their pieces without complaining anymore. And then Mario's like, oh my gosh. Well then they start fighting over the, corn. The plane is which flying I thought, over. I thought us. it was I thought it was sponge. <laughs> What do you do with the sponge? I don't know. Eat the sponge. Just pretend it's corn. <laughs> sure, but no, they start men corn. They start fighting over corn, and then Luigi has to dodge the corn. He's like, yo! I love, I love Luigi's corn dodging face. He's just like, Whoa! yo! <laughs> We've heard these noises before, yeah. Mama Luigi. Mm -hmm. Either it's, it's the same voice clip, or Tony Rosado's just really, really good, good at making the same that noise. one noise. But Luigi comments that. Not only are Ugtar and Yoshi just fighting like two little bratty but kids. they started an epidemic. <laughs> They're making everybody else fight. These are such cursed words to use in 2021. I know. <laughs> well, it's an epidemic because it's I don't, only I don't in see cave why the city. Char the Dune Sorry, city. I don't see why the child is in charge of everyone else's personalities. I but mean, whatever. <laughs> maybe. Hmm. I'm wondering if it's like 
if you see a kid in a bad mood, because I can sort of see the truth to this. If you've got a bratty little kid that puts you in a bad mood, and then you might put other adults into a bad mood. Does Uktar even have parents? Let's not. Is he an orphan child? Maybe. Is that why he just hangs out with Yoshi all day? And Maybe. A butt head? If so, that's a little sad. <laughs> Anywho, I could see how one kid being obnoxious would get the adults annoyed and or get the kids annoyed, which would lead to adults getting annoyed. So Mario's like, we need something happy. We need happiness. And you know what makes people happy? Holidays. Everyone gets nicer on the holidays. Totally. They don't get panicked. They, they don't go crazy with shopping. We don't. <laughs> crazy with shopping, with shipping, with like shipping. things needing to be perfect. With baking People don't go food, crazy. Oh, jeez. <laughs> making the tree. People don't get stressed about their in-laws. <laughs> where the ornaments need to be on the tree. I feel oh like we're both just complaining <laughs> about <laughs> real things. Christmas. Who's coming to the party when the Christmas party is. is just too commercial. Anyway, okay, he's talking about the spirit of like Christmas. Spirit of the holidays. Although Luigi says that. Uh, well, Luigi suggests, oh, you mean like Christmas? But it's... It's, it's August. Uh, it's <laughs> August. Christmas doesn't happen in August. It's like, sure, we can have like a cave Christmas. <laughs> Luigi says, you popped your poncha, big brother. Yeah, you you popped your plunger, big brother. Oh, plunger. I thought he said poncha. And I'm like, what? what? He said plunger, which is still doesn't make it better. <laughs> I don't want to be talking about popping anybody's plunger around here. <laughs> oh, oh, why Why are there so many innuendos this, in this episode? This episode's so <laughs> dirty. <laughs> Is it just us? Have we turned into Luca Jim? Maybe. Is that a euphemism? Is that a euphemism? Mm, mm, that's, what, that's what he said. <laughs> I don't know. We keep talking about Luigi's butt in every episode. <laughs> it's just it's, how we're popping pop in his plunger. <laughs> So, so Mario decides to explain what Christmas is. Well, he says, you know what? No one here... Nobody knows what Christmas is, so who cares? Let's just make it up. Here's my question. I got two things. One, we're running on the Gregorian calendar. We don't have Jesus. And we don't have Jesus. So whatever. We can just make up Christmas. I, I guess so. But if someone says, what does Christmas, like the words mean? They'll be like, Christmas. Christmas means Christmas. Christmas. Is Christmas. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Man. I feel like Christmas has kind of become its own entity. Well, that's a discussion I, well, that, for another time. Well, that's a bit more like the action of Christmas. There's... There's the holiday of Christmas, and there's the celebration of Christmas. Mm -hmm. I'd say Mario's trying to push the holiday more than he is a celebration of it. I like the feelings of Christmas. <laughs> this, that Christmas that spirit. That Christmas feeling. That Christmas spirit. So Christmas is all about uh, being <laughs> nice being nice. People. So it's a day where all the nice kids uh, get lots well, of treats. Well, first it's that people are nice to each other, and Uktar's like, boring. And then I'm Mario like, sweet up, talks child. them in to be like, and... Oh, but kids get treats, and if you're good, you'll get a present from Santa. Yeah, you, you have to be good, and then Uktar's but Uktar like, immediately knows that better. He, but Uktar immediately knows that he will get no presents because he's a bad boy. Well, well he's already been bad. He's bad. He's, he's a bad boy. He's bad. He, he goes to the dog park. I and feel picks like up the other dogs. Do you think if <laughs> he's bad. Do you think if this episode was written out, Mario would have planted elves on the shelf everywhere? No, I don't want to think about that. What is with people in not liking elves on the shelves? Is They're it, weird. I mean, we never even have an elf Thank on the God, shelf. Thank God, I don't want one. Are you like the vine where the guy's eating food the cereal and, and the elves, and the the elves start to move? Yes, that's me. I would throw that thing out the window. Jeez. I don't know. I understand that what it is. It's, it's like it's like not a, a a security camera, but it makes kids feel like it's a security camera watch out. to be good. You watch, watch out! You better, better watch, watch out. out! You better, better watch, watch out! out. <laughs> you better watch. So, oh my God. but Mario anyway. is just over explaining Christmas, and the more he's talking, I'm like Mario. The more ugly Mario. everybody gets. Well, they're getting ugly, but uh, <laughs> everyone is so ugly. I just find like, that they just pan over all the cave people, and I'm like, these children are so disgusting. Like they why? are. There's <laughs> everyone is excited though, except for these three mallow children. You know, all the parents are excited because they're like, oh, our children will finally behave. And all the kids are like, boo. boo. We but have to be good But kids. I don't say that. They just blink, 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 ah. blink, blink. But Mario just keeps digging himself deeper and deeper into this Christmas hole because he's super explaining stuff. Like, if I were Mario and I was introducing he's Christmas. he's just really 
Look, we saw from the wheel thing episode, Mario just gets really excited about stuff and he doesn't think about the consequences. <laughs> okay. He doesn't think about making good on his promises because he's promising a lot. He's like, there's going to be Santa and his reindeer and his sleigh and, and presents, presents and, and this all this and stuff. That. And Luigi's over here like, oh, I better start writing this down. Let's take notes. Take Taking notes. Taking notes. Taking notes. <laughs> Mario, what are you? You know who else is taking notes? Koopa. Koopa who's hiding in the trash. <laughs> and he says, what's that pipe squeezer up to now? It's the hottest day of the year. What do you mean Christmas? Which it's the I hottest guess... day of the year. Why are Mario and Luigi still wearing their overalls i guess Bowser's summer clothes haven't been invented yet yes but bowser also has not heard of christmas in the southern hemisphere because it's summer in the southern hemisphere right now especially in areas like maybe Australia. he usually hibernates during christmas <laughs> maybe do lizards hibernate well when it gets cold they hibernate they do well have... they just don't move well, don't they have just to be in a sunny spot heat. well yeah they can only move when they're warm so they will sun in a sunspot Okay. So basically, it's like hibernation. Okay, but it's less hiding away and more like getting to a getting to a safe warm spot so they don't warm spot. So their blood doesn't freeze. Right, that's <laughs> what I was worried about. Although when their blood does freeze, it's kind of like a hibernation. But even state. then, wouldn't Koopa go down to the southern hemisphere for Christmas and be like kind of like that Mickey Mouse Christmas special where Donald goes south um, for the winter? <laughs> maybe. I was also thinking of Let's Go Luna, where, uh, as true. we explained earlier, they go to Australia for Christmas. Maybe the weather in the Mushroom Kingdom's different. So we're starting our favorite Christmas pastimes, such as chopping down the trees. Deforestation. Deforestation. And two kids sliding around horizontally on the snow. I did not notice that. <laughs> It was it was so uncanny that I'm like, what are, what is this? The Shining Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Would you say at this point in time? Maybe in olden times. Our, in olden times. In 1990, which was 30 years ago. Let's oh. let's sit on that. After, okay, olden we've sat times. on it. So, um, are, do people use more artificial trees or real trees in this time period? I don't know. Because what do you in, think? In the Charlie Brown Christmas special, they talk about the fad that was aluminum Christmas trees. Right. A great big shiny aluminum Christmas tree. I'm going to look that up. Aluminum. Aluminum trees. Al aluminum. aluminum trees. Shout out to all to Metadox. It's aluminium. aluminium trees. Not aluminum. I don't know. We've always had a fake tree. Yeah. I've never like Okay, there are lots of artificial aluminum Christmas aluminium Christmas trees. But yeah, we've always I had guess people have had a fake, fake one, trees. but always in Some Hallmark. people just swear by the real tree, and I'm like, after watching our aunt oh. deal with it it's like oh geez it's such a pain it sheds everywhere you uh, gotta clean it up the branches die and then you have to chop them off hallmark movies they're always chopping down christmas trees and there's a whole market for christmas trees but here it's just deforestation oh come on just just let the poor trees live what? or be like that one christmas uh commercial that's going around where they they grow the tree and then they just decorate it outside <laughs> <laughs> They can't bear to chop it they down. Because they've grown up with this tree their whole lives. It's, it's like, why true. would you chop it down? It's, it's true. too it's, sad. That's me and the dogwood outside. Every time we're out there, Dad's like, oh, it's getting worse. Gonna oh, have no. to chop it. And I'm like, I know it's coming up on its lifespan of 20 years, but come on, Dad. <laughs> So uh, now Koopa has decided to drag someone else into his trash snooping. Bully, bully. Koopa! Yay! I love bully. Yay! I feel like they pulled Bully in for two lines and then they had him leave. <laughs> what, what did, what and you know what? what? He want, wants that tree, King. I want to have a Christmas tree, King Dad. <laughs> I wish you said Green Daddy. Green Daddy. <laughs> I miss Green Daddy. <laughs> what was the line they said in the the one New York episode? Um, Recycle Koopa. What's big green and follows you oh, everywhere you go? Oh, I, uh, a oh. stray Christmas tree. A stray Christmas tree. <laughs> That's a Koopa tail. Koopa tail. No, it's a Luigi. <laughs> but uh, so they're spying on the people. But again, Koopa just keeps getting punished for spying. Uktar drops a bunch of acorns. Nuts? Maybe they're chestnuts. I think they're they're not because they're in, gonna roast the chestnuts. We are in. Oh, the chestnuts April. are more of a fall, right? And we're, we're in, in August. August, <laughs> not April. We're in August, so it could be pears, some Persimmons. sort of fruit. It, they looked yellow to me. 
And then know. Uktar swings through like Tarzan. Cowabunga, dude! Oh my god, Lingo! Uh, all we right, so now Ninja it's time Turtles. to decorate the trees. So with slobbery candy canes. Have you ever seen Christmas trees decorated with candy canes? I have. We've never done it ourselves. Though. Okay. It's it's a it's weird. <laughs> I don't know. I I think ornaments are the way to go. I like ornaments and tinsel. Tinsel, tinsel, you know the little sparkly stuff that goes around the tree. Oh, that's tinsel. That's I thought, tinsel. I thought tinsel was something else, like a boa, maybe. But for a tree, yeah, I thought that was tinsel. Yeah, well, tinsel's got a lot of different names. Okay, I guess the tinsel I'm thinking the tinsel of is isn't, the sparkle on the tree. Isn't what I'm used. There's lights, tinsel. I used to the star. Our mom really. puts poinsettias on the tree. It's very nice. Yeah, she loves red on the tree. That tree is full of red. She's like, it needs more red. And I'm like, Mom, we have enough red on the tree. And she's like, no, I need more red. We need more ornaments. <laughs> we do not need more we need ornaments. We need a separate tree just for our frosty friend ornaments. Because our mom is a, a collector. avid collector of the frosty friends. Not every single one, just the yearly ones. Because sometimes they'll have anniversary ones. <laughs> Which ones are we still missing? We're missing some from the 2000s. I think. I don't remember. I have it written down I somewhere. I don't remember. Anyways. So <laughs> they, they repeat the whole thing about how Santa only gives presents to good well, kids. Well, it's that Yoshi can't help but eat the candy cane as soon as it shows up on the tree. Like, and so and Toto puts up one candy cane and it disappears and she goes, what? And she puts up another one and before she can like turn around, Yoshi's already eating it the candy and cane. she's still holding on to it and she's like, Yoshi! Yoshi. So then Yoshi turns into a candy cane cannon and just goes, pop, 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 Well, pop. she goes, Santa only gives presents to good children. And he's and like, Bully's like, well, we're screwed. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I love the way Bully phrases it. It's really funny. Only would give presents to good kids. Well, no, it's the Santa's like, oh, he only gives them to good people? What a wimp. What a loser. <laughs> what a loser. He doesn't reward us for our bad behavior. What the heck? So Koopa's got a plan, and this plan is to get taken out with the dino trash. <laughs> well, before this plan can take action, the garbage dino, which, by the way, what is up with this garbage dino? We see a lot of cohabitating dinos in this episode. I feel like the dinosaurs just do whatever they feel like. All right, some dinosaurs are friends, but they just, other dinosaurs they just kind of coexist are everywhere. not friends. But the weirdest part about this garbage dino is that he has, like a seat on him maybe he's like where a person would be he didn't really look like yoshi he looked maybe like a dinosaur just wearing like a garbage uniform. but it looked like the the caveman cave person who was supposed cave to be people. working the uh working with the dinosaur to take out the trash just wasn't there and the dinosaur was like oh, i can't do this all by myself oh my gosh. merry christmas i'm gonna, I'm gonna merry christmas to dinosaurs yeah, everybody not. knows that Retail workers don't get a Christmas warp warp. <laughs> if anything, <sighs> does money make the heart feel better that you get double holiday pay? Hmm. No. Maybe. Maybe. Personally, I'm glad I don't have to work on Christmas this year. <laughs> okay. So we go to uh, Mario, Luigi, and Toadstool making toys for the kids, like good little elves. And uh, Uptar so, is well, taking a page from Koopa's well, book. Well, what kind of toys do they make for the kids? Uh, they make, like, little shadow boxes. Mm-hmm. Where you turn the crank uh, in it. jack-o'-lanterns. Uh, conveyor belt It's boxes. basically just really basic cave-themed it's, toys. It's ones that don't need um, electricity. Like jacks. <laughs> just <laughs> physics-based stuff. Putting yeah. a spring in a box. Rocking horse. All that stuff. But Uktar is like, mm, I'm gonna check I'm, out the competition. I'm gonna steal the Christmas presents. And Luigi has <laughs> had enough of Uktar. He like, sees him and he's like, Oh, he's like, nope, no, nope. nope. get out so of here, boy. They chase him around the, the jack in the boxes. And then Uktar tries to blend in with the dolls. And Luigi's like, uh-uh, these dolls are cute. And there's an ugly one in there. Now, I think it's you, Uktar. <laughs> he punts the child out of there. He just throws <laughs> him. Get out. Get out. He doesn't even say get out. He just he goes, quietly <laughs> throws Uktar out. Because Uktar knows what he's doing is yeah. good. He doesn't need to be told that it's bad. So Koopa does finally reveal his plan, and his plan is to be the Grinch and steal Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Grinch
Grinch is another uh, fun oh, I love special. Grinch. But I feel like at this point there are more bad or mediocre Grinch things than there are Well, I good think each Grinch, Grinch thing has its own Trump. pros and cons to okay. it. Okay. Well, we know the pros are all with the original. But what about the movie? <laughs> are there any pros to the movie? Yeah. I mean, the new one is very cute. Okay, I meant the I, like I meant the, the live feeling. action movie. But the live action feeling, they actually have a pretty good story for the Grinch. Really? <laughs> like it's creepy, and I do like the relationship. Well, I say relationship, not like that, but the uh, the companionship between Cindy Lou Who and the Grinch. Okay, <laughs> and then there's like a musical. There's the Benedict Cumberbatch movie. That one is very aesthetically pleasing. It's just aesthetically fine. They kind of, they made the Grinch a little too soft in that one. But you know, whatever. It's <laughs> it's a fun, it's a fun watch every Christmas. It looks nice. Weak. Would My you, boss okay. likes that one. Would you rather watch the live action Grinch or the live action Cat in the Hat? That that is a tough. Question. I would rather watch the live action Cat in the Hat because if you have a party of people, the, the Cat in the Hat is a dumpster fire. That, but it knows it's a dumpster fire. <laughs> the Grinch also knows it's a dumpster fire. I feel it less knows it's a dumpster fire because they really, really try in the makeup department, and then True. for Cat in the and Hat, Jim they're Perry like, really let's just it. let's just be a little less. Oh right, Jim with Perry this, is with this Grinch, Grinch face. Well, we all know the best Jim Carrey is Robotnik. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anywho uh, so, so where was i okay so so uh they finally they're getting this christmas together and, and i got another hole in my sock oh no oh, yeah. we'll have to say goodbye to these socks too these uh, these socks have just been wearing out the the I've had brand of socks they were an old christmas present like two years ago i think two, two years ago that's not very old at all how much are you wearing these Look, socks? I wear socks a lot. I like socks. <laughs> Anywho, it's evening to night time. Uh, they're prepping the sled. Yeah. And, and Mario's like, ah, oh, it's just like Brooklyn. Mmm. Yeah, not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi goes, mm, that line is not exactly. Out of Mom, Luigi. Oh, so there's a couple things before this. The transition where the sun is setting is super glaring and bright and jaggy. <laughs> Also, it's before Mario talks about being just like Brooklyn. Somebody is walking their giant dinosaur like a pet, except it looks more like the person is being walked by the dinosaur <laughs> than the be. dinosaur is walking the person. And we don't need a sled, Mario. We could use, like, an easier machine. We don't have snow to turbine this sled with. I guess they really did give up on those wheels. <laughs> I guess like, so. Like, whatever, the cave people can just work. It's fine. <laughs> so, Uktar is not like those other He's goody bad. two foots. <laughs> Sorry. Goody two foots. Because there's foots. no shoes. So it's goody two foots. Oh, no, jeez. I, I appreciate <laughs> that, like, that there is no, well, where are the shoes? Where are the shoes? Goody two foots. Good so Uktar is playing the lollipop game of getting the good flavors before everybody else. Mm -hmm. Because if anything's true about getting a lollipops, it's that everybody picks the good flavors and then you're left with root beer. I like the root beer one. Well, I cotton think that's because we've been conditioned. Cotton candy's a fun lollipop no, flavor. I always aim for that one. No. Bubble gum is a fun candy I flavor. I like those. Green apple. Mystery. Mystery. Hey, I like green apple. Well, the thing with mystery is I people- I feel like we like the opposite lollipop flavors. I'm playing into the majority here. I like grape. Grape is a good flavor. Yes. Very good. Very, very nice. Good, very nice. So, he's playing this lollipop game where he's like, I'm going to get all the good presents because I know I'm not even going to get one, so I'm just going to get the good <laughs> stuff. And then everyone else can get the lesser of the toys. The lesser of the toys. <laughs> So Uktar is being caught all right. But He's oh no. being caught in a kidnapping because Koopa. Koopa's gonna coop the toy. <laughs> Here's the thing. Before we start laughing about cooping the toys, I want to set up here that Koopa stealing the cho the toys for his own children could be played as a very nice thing. I mean, kind of. Like, he knows that his kids aren't going to be on the good list. I'm just saying, in a very sympathetic light, 
it's like he wants, he his wanted, kids to he have wants a them Christmas. to experience Christmas too, but he didn't have time to prepare things like Mario, Luigi. And he's got to do it the Koopa way. And he's got to do it his own Koopa way. But he's doing this out of pure evil in his heart. So it's, <laughs> it could be nice, but it's not. There's like no remorse in his body. I just can't believe. So yeah, he says he's going to Koop the toys. He's going to Koop the toys. No! <laughs> no Koopa. There are That's children not- in this room. Those aren't those kinds of toys, Koopa. <laughs> oh, no! No, stop no! it, Koopa. We need to pan away from this scene. We need to get away. So Koopa steals the bag, yep. which, to be fair to Dune City, there's probably not a lot of people in I there anyway. Dome City. Like, I thought it was Dune. It's a dome? Because they're, they're all in domes. Okay, it's Dome City. But to be fair to Dome City, there are a ton of people, so it doesn't have to be a gigantic Christmas bag like it is in Polar Express or True. Arthur Christmas or other christmas movies and everything's and made out of plane. wood so <laughs> everything's made out of wood and stone but it's time for mario well, santa okay they just pan over nobody noticed that koopa not not only did ugtar walk in but koopa also walked in there's but not there even no a door here. there's <laughs> not even a door to block their view they were too busy making mario's santa outfit which is a beard and a, a hat. hat and a and a um little toga he had a toga? Yeah. I miss the toga. I thought he just wore stuff. Anyways, did you notice that Mario now has tricolored hair? His hair is brown, his mustache is black, and his beard, <laughs> his is, beard white. is white. This is too many colors. So Mario asks, how does he look? And Luigi <laughs> says, well, do you can't wear that in Brooklyn. I wouldn't wear that in Brooklyn. <laughs> and I'm like, what is that supposed and he to And super be? wheezes. And it's like, oh do people dressed as, is it like Santa Claus where if, you, where if you're dressed as Santa I, in Brooklyn, you get arrested? I think the craziest thing here is that we find out that Koopa sheds. <laughs> yeah. Because they, they find out that their stuff is missing and Princess Toadstool finds a convenient scale on the ground. Yeah, so that way we... I, I appreciate that we don't blame it on Ugtar. We we blame it on Koopa. I would blame it on Ugtar. Well, <laughs> Ugtar's not strong enough to hold all those toys, maybe. But do and Koopas Mario's molt? Do turtles molt? Do Koopa? I mean, do turtles shed scales? Maybe. I feel like you know this better than I do. I don't I think, think they I do. Think so. Things that shed scales include... Are reptiles. Include uh, he is he- a reptile. Heal monsters. They they do it in patches if it's like a turtle or something. So that's like molting. True. Hmm. I don't. I don't really know why his scale would have fallen out. Either way, we He's know more like an alligator. Koopa <laughs> has coopnapped the toys, so. and Mario calls him a contemptible carbuckle. Carbuckle. <laughs> I missed that. Maybe he meant a carbuckle because he's made of leather. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm just the carbuckle trying... ate itself. <laughs> what are we gonna do with that carbuckle? All right. So we get a real Christmas shot here. Yoshi flies us to uh, Yo- Coney Island Disco Palace. Well, they call it the Neon Castle. Okay. But we all know it's the Coney Island Disco Palace. It's the Coney Island Disco Palace. <laughs> we'll go to the Neon Castle, and Yoshi flies us there. And I forgot so that Yoshi's got you a could... special peewing power up. I forgot that Yoshi had that in the games. <laughs> Oops. Yoshi is long. Yoshi's long. He can carry a whole sled and it's Mario. It's made out of stone. Like, jeez. Good job, Yoshi. So... <laughs> So Ugtar does not fear the man. Okay. It must so be part of his 90s charm. We, we cut to something. Koopa being like, all right, let's see what we got here. And he like shuffles the bag out. He dumps all the presents, which should have broken them, but whatever. They packed them very and, nicely. And, and it's like, oops, there was a person with those cave toys. And he's like, you, what are you doing here? And then Ugtar's like, these are my toya. My toya. My toya. And Koopa goes, no, my toya. <laughs> So they're both it's such being... a '90s thing to be like a brat, like be like, "I don't listen to the man. No, I, I do what I want." This is like, pretty oh fun God. because both sides are being selfish here. So it's not like he's being a complete brat and doesn't like. Honestly, this really reminds it. me of the previous Christmas episode that they've had in the Mario series. What? Oh, with the toad. 
<laughs> or Toad's being a brat about Christmas and Koopa's also being a brat about Christmas. It's just like, man, brat versus brat. I just like how they're quarreling against each other. <laughs> they're enemies of enemies. Well, uh, Koopa has the upper hand. <laughs> I think he picks up Uktar, but Uktar's like, I'm opening no, the I'm presents right open now. Presents. I'm opening them right now. And then Koopa's like, no, that was for Bully. Don't do it. And he opens the present. The present is a lit bomb. And it was... <laughs> A bomb? And, Who wrapped that? <laughs> and then Koopa goes, no, no, stop. You weren't supposed to blow up until Christmas <sighs> morning. <laughs> it's a good joke, but at the same point, like, who wrapped this bomb? Is this why Koopa had to steal all the other presents? Because the only presents he had were bombs? <laughs> I'm thinking so. All he had lying around were old bombs supplies. And Koopas and bombs, stuff like that. He's bullet like, bills. Oh, man. They the Tuis, piranha plants. What? <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'm smelling something. Mm, okay. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. It's beginning to look just like an ice world. Oh boy, here we go. It's the platformer's greatest foe. Moving around is slow. Because of all the irritating snow oh, Yes, it's clear that we're in the token ice world, ice world. Arm yourself with rage For instead of you fighting through Your controls are fighting you Through the whole darn stage You've been through meadows and desert and water and forest and sky All since level one Now is the time for your talents to shine as you brave the tundra atop And slip and slip and slip and slip and, slip and fall onto your bow Struggling through the cliche ice world. Ice world. Death defying jumps and jumps. Falling icicles hit the floor as you beg and plead no more in this frozen dump. So, before we get back to what we were talking about, because I forgot. Uh, <laughs> you forgot what we were talking about. Yes. I looked up artificial aluminum Christmas trees and I found out uh, maybe artificial Christmas trees aren't as eco friendly as cutting down the tree every year because you have to use a lot of plastic to make True. one though you, you reuse them a bunch i guess so but they're not infinite either that's true so you have to keep buying nothing is infinite in our mortal coil <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> artificial christmas trees become century-long residents of city landfills oh no oh and fire risk do not cause fire okay <laughs> All right, well, we've crushed the Christmas spirit. Uh, it's Sorry. time for uh, Bowser to crush Uktar by feeding him to his dino pit. <laughs> yeah, he's being fed to the dinos now. I really love this line where Koopa's like, Oh, this part's great. Uktar. Like, remember, Uktar, this is what you get. And also remember, your name backwards is Rat Goo. <laughs> And he walks out, and it's like, it's just like, wow. What? Okay. That'd be a like. A harsh there. Rat goo. That'd be like if he's making fun of Mario, and he's like, remember, Mario, your name backwards is Oyram. Olimar. <laughs> Orima. What is Luigi's bas backwards? Waluigi. Igluigi. Igilu. Igilu. Iggy, Iggle, it, it just doesn't really work. Iggy, <laughs> it only works for Uptar, who is Rat Goo. Rat Goo, what's Yoshi backwards? Yishoi. Oh, Yishoi. I think that was a Game Grumps bit where they're like, Yoshi backwards is Ikosoi. Ikosoi. <laughs> and his name backwards is Rat Goo, and then Koopa just leaves the room because oh he's like, God. I feel proud of myself for that one. <laughs> So <laughs> he, he leaves when he's on. So Mario uh, jumps, and thankfully, Uktar is being executed in ground level in the sight. The slowest way possible. And in ground level sight, between, so Mario can see him. It's by, they dangle him on a pulley system with a rope, and then they're slowly a burning rope. the it's rope. A vine. <laughs> so it's a vine. And they're slowly burning the vine. But luckily, they used a very sturdy vine, so it'd be a slow death. <laughs> yes. Slow and thoughtful. So. Mario pulls out. You can really out, hear the toad when he screams. <laughs> Mario pulls out his plumber's toolbox to help out. Oh my god, the toolbox! And in the toolbox, there's a little dinosaur wrench. 
He just and he pries it open like you would a jack, and his jaw just dislocates, and it's like, it's like, ah! and I'm like what, what is this? I, I need to say what it is. It's like when you put a jack in something to uh, lift it. Or I know, but it. what kind of creature is this? I don't know. I feel like it's an artificial creature. Oh my god! But uh, <laughs> why can't we just have like bone tools or something? Why, why do we have? We already do have bone tools or... earlier, but we that would have taken too much time to saw the uh, the bars open. Oh my god! So <laughs> so Mario pries the bars open, and he needs to get through the bars. Help Santa through the bars. He asks oh, Yoshi. But Santa need go on diet. <laughs> this I is, think you have a point with these fat this jokes. This is the second diet joke, and this is the third weight problem in this in the show. This is more than a coincidence. Something's happening. Maybe I, it's Phil Harnage I that think has it, the problem. I think it's Phil Harnage, because he wrote the, <laughs> the base uh, story for all these episodes. I think it's Phil. Phil, are you doing okay? I'm sure your weight is fine, Phil. Calm how's, down. How's your face? How's your wife? <laughs> like gumshoe. Gumshoe, how's your face? <laughs> so, <laughs> Santa is not going on a diet, Yoshi. This is a part of the Santa image. <laughs> this just makes me think of Santa Claus, where he suddenly starts gaining weight, but he's perfectly fit, and the doctor's like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> This is weird. I just like how Yoshi gets spooked by a boodilly. <laughs> oh, so it's that Yoshi's about to uh, bum rush Ram Mario. Santa. <laughs> yeah, Santa through the uh, pipe, but then a boodilly spooks him and he goes in with extra force. So he falls in as <laughs> so well as Santa. Falls in. <laughs> Everyone falls in. And you know what it's time for? The song. The song. It's time and for I'm... our Koopaling Christmas Carol. And I'm really surprised that they didn't just grab a, a royalty song. free Christmas song and sing over it like Deck the Halls. I think that's royalty free. Maybe. What are some look, look, all right, oh, royalty geez. free Christmas songs? I don't know, but while the Koopalings are singing their Christmas carol, Mario has to dodge uh, Mecha Koopas, Thwomps, Dry Bones, and some Koopa football players who are throwing baseballs. Silent because night. Because that has to do jingle bells with each other. <laughs> Uh, Hark by Herald. A lot of these are. A lot of those are Christian. Oh. We can't have Christian stuff in our Mario show. I mean, <laughs> we probably. <laughs> oh, come all you fate. Deck the halls. Yeah, they could have sung Deck the Halls with bouts of holly. Blah, 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 blah. We wish you a Merry Christmas is royalty free. I don't know how old some of these things are. I'm thinking if it's like Christmas Carol was over 100 years old, so. I believe that these songs were written in that time period and therefore have aged. So I think Martha Moran did the research because Mario is writing Yoshi like in the games. It's kind of 2D based, but it's a lot of just running around. Oh no, there's a thing. Oh no, we're getting taken up the way. It's time to have Cape Santa Mario. Cape Santa Mario flies Yoshi out of places. It just makes me think of Mario's Santa costume for Mario Odyssey. (laughs) And from the, well, now I'm thinking of Bowser's Santa outfit from the uh, racing <laughs> game. I love that one. That you have to pay with for real money. Oh. Whatever. But Super Santa is to the Comes rescue. to save the day, and sadly, Uktar lives. Why are we sad about this? Ugh. I like I this. The I like the sea song that goes back and forth, which is like Ugtar goes down, and then Mario goes down because he's stuck on the and then Mario other end. Mario randomly poofs for no reason. I mean, poofs. Also, Dino did not get their food. Dino sad. Dino sad. I think Mario poofs because he's supposed to lose his power up, but then they forgot to make him lose his power up till the next scene. <laughs> nothing changed. So nothing changes. He just goes poof. <laughs> so Ukta is like, "Oh my goodness, Santa! Thank you, Santa! You're so nice." And then Santa's like, "Uh huh. Yeah, sure, boy. I knew you were being bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's but, the whole reason you're here." <laughs> but what were you doing with all those toys? And then. Uktar's like, Uktar, not know what you talk about. And then Santa's like, fuss up, kid. And then Uktar's like, I'm sorry. I was I was being greedy. Oh, um, yeah, you know, because Santa was a Bambi. I mean, uh, well, boy no. once. Before that, 
He's like, I promise I'll never do anything ever bad again. And he goes, promise. And then Santa goes, don't forget to uncross your fingers while you promise. Behind your back. And then Ukdar, I did like this line from Ukdar. How did Santa know? Like, Santa's I'm just Santa. so smart and clairvoyant. He's like, how'd you know? Santa himself was a little lying bambino once before. And when I say bambino, I mean boy. <laughs> but the bam boy bino. I do like that Ukar doesn't know that Mario is Santa. He just thinks it's Santa. I don't know. I really like how he <laughs> he double ratted Ukar and then Ukar is like, I'm impressed. What? I really love how Bully yells that he's gonna turn Santa into Christmas pudding. <laughs> oh, well before that, it's that we need Yoshi. Yoshi, fly us away. Wait, you don't have any wings. Those so let, let me bust up the wall of this castle real quick. I need to. <laughs> so we can find a pee wing. I need to get a pee wing. And then Yoshi eats the wings and then puts them on well, his, then his back. then his head coos and then they appear on his back. But <laughs> I like that Bully is about to make a Christmas casserole with Santa, if you know what I'm <laughs> saying. <Woo! laughs> he says Christmas pudding, which figgy pudding would have been the better one, but he's about to make that Christmas casserole. <laughs> So they return Uktar to his bed. Before that, oh. how who runs out of the house at the end there? It's a couple of the Koopalings. There's but it's a hard good to see. number. It's just like and a it's so second. out of focus. I can't tell yeah, I, which one. There was one tall one that could have been bully. I maybe think there the was twins, a rainbow one. <laughs> Either way, it's hard to tell. But <laughs> Uktar is returned home into his bed, which again, he lives alone. Maybe he is an orphan. <laughs> And if so, I, I hate him a little we, less now. Are we supposed to excuse his bad behavior because he's an orphan? No, Peach, <laughs> but we can explain his bad behavior as he needs attention from parental figures. And the mm -hmm. best way to get attention is to be bad. Bad. He's so he pulls like the good. whole, like, oh, Santa, well, I don't need a present. at first he's like, Uktar is happy with living as a present. Uktar <laughs> thinks every day that he is alive in this world. But Uktar will not mind if a present is left at his bedside. And Mario's like, yeah, okay, buddy, I was already going to give you a present. So, oh, so, <laughs> so, so Mario's like, I guess he's, he's learned his lesson enough today. So he does give Uktar a present. He gives him a little shadow box. It's not the best present. It's not the worst present. But it, does is, get it is an present. unbiased present. So then in the morning, Mario is sleeping in, and then Uktar comes in. You know, in, in a moment of niceness, he's like, oh, Mario didn't get a present. Why did Santa miss Mario? Santa missed Mario, who's Why the nicest guy in town. Let's give Mario a present. And, he, and by himself, he isn't even pushed with other people to do it. He does it by himself. He gives Mario a present. It's like... Wow. Wow. I want we didn't open the present to see what was inside. Maybe it was like probably like a rock. A rock. <laughs> I mean that rock could have been really important to Uktar. That's his pet rock, Mario. It means a lot to me. Take good care of it. So then Mario's like, Whoa, I got a present. Hey, audience, wouldn't it be great if every day were Christmas? Well, as we can tell from the Sesame Street special, no. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of the Jimmy Neutron episode where it was his birthday every single day. No. <laughs> what was it, the Sesame Street special? That's where Elmo wishes it was Christmas every day, and so they, like, celebrate Christmas every single day, and everybody just gets really tired of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like, the middle of July, and they're all like, like Christmas. It's, so hot, like Christmas. it just doesn't make it special anymore, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point of holidays. They're nice, but you can't have them constantly, mm. or else they lose meaning. They're splendor. It's, you gotta build up to them. And thus, we've come to the end. We have. Of our special Christmas episode. Before we get to the Most Valuable Paisano, would you say that Uktar is a lot like bratty elmo in those first few seasons of sesame street or i say he's a lot like max from goof troop okay can you explain that um it's just that 90s kid mentality of like whoa i'm super cool i don't, I have, don't to have to listen to my parents and play I by the I rules Ugh. it's like, like oh whack pack <laughs> rules are important that is who who was your most valuable paisano um Hmm. I don't know. I think compared to Wheel Thing, Mario was a bit better. 
about this Christmas idea, although he was very, he wasn't super grounded about it, although we didn't see Luigi being pushed to his limit <laughs> to make good on Mario's stupid promises. But... You know, Mario went the extra mile, he dressed up as Santa. He wanted to dress the part, he wanted to do the whole rigmarole. He and went and delivered all those presents. He delivered the presents. And saved and Uktar's butt. <laughs> he saved Uktar's butt, and I feel like he got too Uktar. It's not just, like, disciplining a kid. Mm -hmm. It's like, listen, kid, I was you. I am you. And I then the it. kid's like, what? No, Whoa. you weren't. And they're like, yeah, I was. I wish he told a story, like, of when he, of an evil thing he did. Do you think as- I like how they leave it up to your interpretation. She's like, I was also a Bambino once. <laughs> I guess so. Would you say Mario was the rowdy one and yes. Luigi was like the, no. <laughs> I, I did it. I broke the plate. Oh no, mama's gonna kill me. I broke the plate, mama. mama. I'm sorry. And then Mario would be like, no, it was me. Don't make Luigi sad. Aww. Or would Mario do that? Would he just let Luigi take the blame? Wh which one is more likely? I don't know. They're both sweet. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't think the second one is sweet, because that means that Luigi has to take the blame for Mario. Uh, and Mario yeah, I lives... guess it, I mean they both feel like siblings. And Mario lives footloose and fancy free. Anywho, I put Mario as MVP. Although you I put Mario. Koopa as a close second because I thought Koopa was really great in this episode. I also like, I think Koopa had a lot of the good one liners. And you know, he just wanted to make Christmas for his kids the way yeah. he knows how to. And also, he just kept getting that short end of the stick. <laughs> you know what? Koopa was not even punished this episode. There was no, like, oh, we're going to dump this on you, Koopa. After he left the room, he didn't come back except maybe seeing santa fly away maybe he was one of the blurry figures that ran out of the building maybe we just don't know we just don't know anywho i'm gonna give it tomorrow mario officially okay i'll give it to koopa all right i thought it was pretty funny very nice all right so where can we find you delfino i'm at delfino durians.tumblr.com very nice i'm at peach supreme art.tumblr.com and you should have some art going up soon. Hey, I've been doodling while we've been recording this episode. That's the most inside joke. I can't even find that clip on YouTube. I used to be able to find it on YouTube, but they took the <laughs> they got rid of a lot of those. Clips. I think they had to take down the clips, but. <laughs> It's from Hugto Precure, where Hannah's like, Hug Tan, say my name! Say well, my name! Hug Tan saying everyone's name except for Hannah's. Oh my! Oh my! Say ya! And, she, and then ha. Hannah's like, Hannah, say my name! Say ha, Hannah! Ha! 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 And the tongue is going crazy. Our outro theme was composed by Taylor Lair. Yeah. You can find her stuff at tlair.bandcamp.com that's t letter t l a i r e dot bandcamp.com they also have a twitter the link is in the description it's got a more con it's got a longer tagline so oh, gee, i can barely remember the bandcamp it's <laughs> only like six digits long oh oh wow words are hard anywho i hope everyone has a very merry christmas and happy holidays happy holidays and happy such. holidays happy holidays let the holidays keep bringing holidays. peace on earth <laughs> just singing a bunch of different songs <laughs> Park yeah. the hell and just say. Oh, Anywho. one last uh, one Christmas, last fact Christmas fact before. Only. Okay, so it's not on the screen now, but as I was looking up the aluminum Christmas tree uh, facts, I found out that the reason they fell out of favor was exactly because of Charlie Brown. Hmm. Because Charlie Brown was like, it's not cool to have an aluminum Christmas tree. That's just lame. And people were like, oh. <gasps> lame oh i'm gonna throw it out i do love the little tinkly Christmas tree they have. <laughs> what That's a pathetic amazing. tree it actually it actually a trend. made a change in the Very world interesting. 
Anyway, uh, join us next time for a uh, considerably less Christmas themed episode. Yes, where uh, it's not even a New Year's themed episode. And sadly, we'll, we'll be going back to our regular schedule yes. program. And if I were brave enough to ask Vinnie Vinesauce, I would, because we have to send in the clown. No. He loves clowns. No. Send in the clown. I don't want to do the clown. We're going to see the clown. There's a reason I skipped this one on the schedule. <laughs> By Zani. Hi, Zani. <laughs> Uktar's fingers, too. How Santa know? Santa was a bambino, er, uh, boy, once himself, Uktar.